Oh, buns, oh sweet buns. Oh, look at how far our world has come. We've got big buildings, a filled-in foreground, and tall towers, and... Oh, wait, what's that? Oh, what's that? You said you want to do it all again today. Ah, well, you're just in time. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. I'm so proud to say that today, it's finally time. The Stone Age, it's over. By the end of today's episode, we'll not only be building an iron farm, but by far the best, easiest iron farm in the entire game. You're gonna need this. Villager breeder, sweet, beautiful, wonderful, tall villager breeder. How are you? Villagers, villagers, I know I went on a little bit of a sidetrack last episode, but oh my gosh, this sounds like you guys have been busy. It sounds like you don't care at all. I'm glad to see that you two are still madly, deeply in love and... Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, four children? Yeah, that's gonna be way more than enough for today's build. For today's iron farm, when it comes to mobs, you're gonna need three villagers and one zombie. Now with that handy little breeder set up over there, getting villagers is not going to be a problem for the most part. But I think we should rewind a little bit because if you've been playing Minecraft for any longer than like a month and you built more than like two farms, then you might have realized you caught on to it that iron, iron, a key ingredient in rails, minecarts, hoppers, and so many other things like redstone components. It's one of the most useful supplies in all of Minecraft. Because iron is one of the most useful supplies, an iron farm is one of the best farms you can build in your entire world. Sad news, this farm is for Minecraft Java only. Maybe we'll talk Bedrock later. A good iron farm is an automatic iron farm. And an automatic iron farm, just like any automatic farm, is a location, location. We want to put this where it's always going to be active and not on top of another village. And not on top of another village, check, that's the easy part. As long as you don't build this iron farm on top of your villager breeder or right next door, it should be fine. Now load it in. I've been doing a little bit of thinking in between episodes here. Where could I put this in the base? At first I was thinking the ominous orb. Hmm. It's kind of like a cool area over here, but like, I don't know if this is always going to be central. The cookie farm, it's got a lot of land, but hardcore not central. And then like a torch flower that perhaps could actually light up, it hit me. This spot right here. Right next to, to the whole lava farm. After all, this farm is going to have lava, can't have wood near it. Uh, this spot right here is kind of like off to the side right now. But I think one day, one day soon, this will be center. And so, with that setup checked on and out of the way, uh, you know what time of the day it is. My friends, my dear, dear beloved laddies, I would like to do a little bit of introducing to you. More specifically, please sit down, take a seat, and meet my friend. Mud Makles. Mmm, mud. Mud is a delicious, wonderful block that was added in the Minecraft 1.19 wild update. Mud is also a block that I'm so sorry about this. Sincerely, please don't get mad at me. I was sleeping on it the entire series so far. I can't believe I haven't touched a single mud block, let alone made one. Yeah, so I think it was actually in the comments of the last episode, or maybe it was the episode before, that I saw something about mud being mentioned, and oh, it hit me. It hit me then and there that for this iron farm, we need to build this out of blocks that are not going to light on fire and burn. And I would like to also build it out of blocks that I think I like the look of very, very nicely and warmly. Coincidentally, I think that's mud. To make mud, oh, it's so easy. Place dirt on the ground and then use water bottle on the mud. Place a water source, use the water again, and rinse and repeat quite literally over and over and over again until you have a bunch of mud. Now, great news for this iron farm that we'll be building today. It's a modified version of one of the designs I designed. You need like, I mean, I don't know. It's not exact amounts, but like a stack of building blocks, a stack and a half. Like it's not the most in the world. Oh, whoops, that's my bad. So, mud. I'm gonna need to get my hands on a plenty bit of mud. And then I'm also gonna need to give my good old friend, of course, three chapels. We're gonna need to cut down any tree in the nearby vicinity that could possibly light on fire. And then I think these pink petals, too. I'm growing sick and tired and tired and sick of these things. So, I'm gonna need to get these out of here, too. Wish me luck. I'll be back before you knew I was gone. Oh, whoa, <laughs> no way. I never made yellow dive before. That's crazy. I 
told you so. Just a tiny bit of time later, and I bet you could hardly believe your eyes, but I... I'm something of an overachiever. Not only did I do exactly what I said I was going to do, but I also went ahead and lit up the nearby vicinity with torches. After all, nighttime inside of this world? Not exactly the best track record. Ah, anyways, let's move on. Beautiful blocks. For this farm today, it's very important that you pick blocks to build this farm out of that are not going to light on fire. For example, beautiful mud and I think a little bit of terracotta too. That's going to look so good and it will never burn. So once you've found the blocks that you want to build your iron farm out of and then found a good central location that'll stay loaded in, it's time to start the build. To start the build, we're going to kick things off by building up into the air. An iron farm, you see it works off of iron golem spawning that is triggered by basically villagers being mortified uh, <laughs> and terrified for their life. So to isolate the spawns, we're going to build up like 10, 15 blocks. Now listen, listen, I promise, this farm that I will be building today, ethics, 100% considered, very, very ethical farm. I've considered the villagers, like, um, how they're gonna feel when they're inside of the farm, and, you know, their livelihood, the quality of life, you know, all of those things. Oh, man, I can't count. Any more yellow terracotta? <laughs> Hold on. Anyways, where were we? Lesson in ethics, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make sure the villagers are nice and comfortable, so I will not see a single comment asking me anything about, like, hey, is that really nice of you to do to the villagers? Hey, are they comfortable? Hey, do they like where they're living? I interrupted this broadcast to remind you to delete that like button for me right now, real quick. Thank you. None of it, none of it at all. Don't worry, the villagers are gonna be fine. We're gonna start off with a, a couple different isolated rooms up here on top of the farm. Now quickly, conveniently, smoothly, it becomes nighttime. Which brings me to the topic of beds. I'm gonna sleep. You see, up on top of this farm, we'll have a couple different things powering it. Eventually, very, very soon here, we'll have villagers inside of this farm, but we'll also have a zombie inside of it. The zombie's gonna go on the red block, the villagers are gonna go on the yellow blocks, make it nice and easier. Now, all around where the villagers are going to eventually stand, we're gonna need some kind of solid block to contain them. That solid block to contain them? Great news, you do whatever you like to do. I personally, I, I mean, look, you might have seen me build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know. You might have seen me build an iron farm or two, and I'd never change. I like the idea of being able to see the villagers inside of this thing mercilessly and fear fully. Fearfully panicking all the time, so I'm gonna go ahead and use glass as a building block. Also, glass doubles as a non-spawnable block, which will help later on. Now, inside of each villager cell, we will need to have three things. A bed placed very specifically at the back of this three-block long chamber, facing towards the middle, then a torch either right there or right there, it doesn't really matter. And then finally, a villager. Villager, villager, we'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. I think what we're gonna try and do is maybe like build this farm up a little bit, wait for it to become nighttime, so I guess it'll be a bit of a wait, and then get the zombie in first. From my experience with working with these villager farms, getting the zombie in first is a little bit easier and smarter. And then after that, we can easily throw a couple villagers in too. I realize it's a little bit messy looking here, but we have a glass over there. We've got glass in the middle. We've got glass over here. I have some temporary dirt blocks placed right there. And then on the floor. And then on the floor for this farm, I'm going to drop water right there. And that's going to make sure no zombies ever end up accidentally burning for some kind of strange reason. Now, next up, using a handful of temporary blocks placed right here in between these open spots where I could have fallen, we're going to make this a little bit safer. And then we're going to set it up to get a zombie inside of it. We'll start with a trap door placed right there. Then we're gonna go ahead and block over one of these sides. I'll block over this side. After that, we need to make it narrow so the villager or the zombie will have one option, and that's gonna be chase me up a staircase that I'll build in a minute, and then try and get me when I'm standing on the other side here. For now, we'll leave that trap door open and we'll build some walls right there, which means the zombie can only walk this way. That's perfect. Now, uh, next up, next up, the fun, yeah, fun, not, not so fun part. We need to build our way up and down off of this farm. It's time for a big staircase, and from my experience, if possible, if you can make the staircase in a straight line, it'll be a little bit better, easier, and safer to use. Great news, I, uh, I uh, suppose, is you can use any block to, to make your staircase. It's temporary. Okay, that's not really, like, great news or nothing like that, but, yeah, you gotta build a big staircase. Oh, and by the way, this tower, the pillar that we built before, actually, just leave it for now. Leave it there. It'll help later.
Ah, uh, staircase, staircase. I had a feeling this was gonna be a little bit of a problem. The staircase hits the sheep pen. I really, really want to build a straight staircase, so I guess I'll just do like <laughs> the world's most beautiful looking staircase. Uh, we'll just cut over the, the pen, that'll be fine, no big deal. And then we'll close it up right over here with like a couple more blocks. And that should hopefully be good. Because we're gonna have to take on this next part in the dead of night, uh, to make it a little bit safer up on top of the farm, we'll run back up here and just double check. Make sure we have tons of light up here. I don't want any mob spawning. And to now, with the day only halfway done, it's time to wait. You see, I have got a great idea. My great idea for getting a zombie inside of this farm involves this noisy cave. Uh, so take a listen. It definitely looks, uh, it looks and sounds like there are mobs. Yes, there's a lot of mobs inside of this cave. I was thinking maybe I could lure one zombie out somehow, get around the creeper or something, and lead it up to my farm. Oh, like you. If I could lure you out, oh, that'd be wonderful. That'd be cool too. Oh, uh, well, never mind. There's a small problem there. The skeleton turned on him. There's more zombies though, so that's fine. I don't need the farmer anyways. In the meantime here, while we wait for nighttime to roll over, inside of the everything world, let's take a look at specific mechanics, real quick. So iron golem spawning, iron farms in general, there's kind of a lot to them. But long story short, when the villagers are panicking, they're gonna try and summon in an iron golem. You'll need three villagers panicking at any given time to actually pull that off. When our poor villager friends try to summon in that iron golem, they're gonna summon it in in a box that kind of looks a little bit something like this right here. We're gonna have a little bit of up and down and a little bit of vertical as well. By building our farm up in the air today, we're ensuring that the iron golems can only spawn where we want them to spawn and not say like off to the side on the grass or the planks over there. Here's the game plan. As soon as it becomes nighttime, which should be any four minutes from now, any four or so minutes from now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run back down into this cave over here, break out one of the blocks and try and lure one of the zombies over to me. Because the zombies inside of this cave are holding items, they're never going to despawn. Alternatively, you're gonna need to get your hands on a zombie with a name tag. Why did you do that? Why in the world did you do that? No. All right, well look, change of plans. I don't know what's going on here, but I need to trap at least one zombie and make sure it's safe. <laughs> and two zombies it is. All right. Excuse me, sir, I'm sorry about that. Just wait there, wait there for now. Hey, stop it, stop it, leave my zombies alone. And no more of anything else from this cave. This cave is vile, disgusting, and absolutely terrible. No good. All right, well, that was terrifying to say the least, but as soon as it's nighttime, I'm gonna break the zombie out of the boat and, <laughs> and let it follow me all the way up to the sweet, sweet zombie farm. Maybe even give it something nicer to hold too. But hey, now speaking of boats, boats and zombies, that's another great way to keep a mob from despawning ever. If you wanted to, you could reconfigure the design a little bit, only, only a tiny bit, and actually have a zombie just sit inside of a boat. No name tag, no item holding required. It's kind of nice. And so, as the sun slowly, slowly sets and nighttime enters the world, I think it's go time, lads. At 3 and B, we'll show hitboxes. That way I can be sure that I'm not accidentally smacking the zombie. I'll go ahead and hit the boat, or way off to the side of the boat, but still the boat. Now all I need to do at nighttime here with this zombie is actually relatively straightforward. We just need to lead this zombie all the way up to the farm. With the staircase already built and things already made relatively safe over here with some torches, this shouldn't be too hard. All that I need to do is also make sure I'm not like running too quickly. If I get too far away from the zombie, I might like try and get creative with the pathfinding and run somewhere else or whatever. Now once I hit the top of this thing, zombie, zombie, oh, there's another one too. Okay, so we're gonna have to be a little bit quick here. Zombie number one, wait, uh, whoops, that's my bad. Well, you're gonna walk in and to stop the other one, we put a blocker right there. My friend, my dear friend, what happened to you? How'd you end up getting trapped inside of this thing? Oh, that's unfortunate. With a zombie inside of that thing, it's gonna be stuck there forever. The other one, trying to antagonize my villagers, that's a hard no. Just to be more than cautious that nothing terrible could ever happen to my zombie up here. Back on top of the farm, I don't need that trap door anymore, so I'll pull it out and swap it with a solid block. Zombie, checked up. The bright and early the next day time, it's time for a little bit of grounds work. We need to check the perimeters of this building before I start letting any villagers out. There needs to be no zombies or creepers or nothing, none of it. I don't wanna see anyone. 
Running around down here on the ground a little bit and I think we're in the clear. I'm like 95% sure that one zombie with the helmet on, it just kind of wandered off too far and despawned or something because I don't see it anywhere. So the zombie, it's only like half of the equation here. I was thinking I could maybe get a little bit clever with this boat. Maybe what I was hoping is I could put the boat right against the door here and then maybe like flick the door open. Maybe have a workstation right outside. Maybe like one of you will walk right against the boat. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you push your friend right into the boat. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh-huh, that's exactly it. That's what I was thinking. We could kind of ghost the villager straight through the door because their hitbox and the boat and everything like that. Now it's time for the workstations. We've been moving villagers a whole lot recently. I hope, I really, really hope that this will go smooth, but we're gonna use workstations and try and just string the villagers straight up the hill and right up into the farm. Uh, please work, please, please work. All right, so look, I'm trusting you here, buddy. You got that job, that's nice. I take that job away from you. Yeah, 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 you're not so bad after all, maybe. Maybe you walk right up the hill to this job, uh-huh, beautiful. Then, what if I took that job away and said, hey, my friend, I gotta, oh, yes, 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 amazing. Now, another way that you could move villagers inside of this farm, if you didn't want to use workstations for whatever reason, is maybe consider using, like, uh, rail carts or something like that. I don't really like to use rail carts for moving villagers as much nowadays because, I don't know, I kind of got the hang of it with, like, workstations. It works, uh, like, decently well. So with the villager standing already partially up the staircase, this might be a long shot, but can I put a workstation all the way up there and maybe just, uh... Alright. Uh, you're gonna need to work a little bit smarter than that, buddy. And look, look, I don't want to push it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and break that workstation. There's one right there. It should take that one, and then finally, the home stretch will be that one right there. Yeah, uh-huh, you take that. The workstation is mine. You're gonna keep walking up, and oh, it's beautiful. What I gotta do here real quick is go ahead and clear up some of these blocks, but definitely not that one. Let's try and get this villager into, say, that workstation right there. Mm-hmm. So close, so close, and boom. Bingo, you're in. That's one down. Only two more to go. All right, well, look, laddies. Uh, knock on wood for sure here, but uh, there I say that that was delightful. That was um, relatively delightful. You come with me? Oh, you're so smart. And you know what? I trust you. I believe in you. Your friend did it perfectly. You could do it perfectly. And one more too. Let's do this. You know, a little bit of a side note here, but high key, low key, maybe medium key. I'm still pretty bummed that I wasn't able to save that zombie villager. Not that a zombie villager really matters or anything like that. Like, it's all just aesthetics, really. But I would have been so cool to have a zombie villager inside of this thing. Instead of just like the... The plain old classic one. All right. Well, that'll be a little bit of a problem. We don't need two in one. So in this weird situation, I suppose what I could do is try and lure one of you out of the cell. Like, mm, how could I do this? Maybe one workstation right there and... Uh, <sighs> Look, I uh, truthfully, I've never really had this problem before where both villagers try and <laughs> go into the same cell. But there we go. That, that should be fine. Hey, Bozo, you gotta be careful doing that. Yeah, okay. Mm, all right, we don't have the brightest one. And so, just like that, three villagers, and like, not too much problems, a little bit of switch up, but three villagers checked on inside of this farm. Now, believe it or not, at this point, we're almost done. Not quite, but almost. Hey, yo, hold on. I'll be right back. One hour later. Deo, uh, sorry about that. So I'm recording this Iron Farm episode in the middle of the Minecraft mob boat 2023. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, does somebody smell seafood in here, or is that just a crab? Yeah, so just as I was finishing up the villager part of this farm, they dropped the crab mob boat reveal video, and oh boy, that's interesting. A block, an item, a, a tool, gear, I, I'm not too sure what to make of this thing. Uh, something, a something that lets you reach a little bit farther when building, for example, when making beautiful iron farm, including the fence gates, or signs that you need. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, th that's interesting for sure. That's all I can say right now. Though. 
So back up on top of this farm, eventually, once Iron Golem starts spawning, we want to dump them off the side of this platform. To dump them off the side of this platform, we're going to start by lighting ourselves up with the center zombie spot right there and place a staircase facing forward. From this point on, this is going to be the front side of this farm. Now these random dirt blocks that I put in here, these were all just temporary, we don't really need those, so I can go ahead and pull those out. With a couple more staircases, specifically two on either side, we're going to make a five block long stretch of staircases on the front of the farm. After that, it's time for solid building blocks, and actually slabs, that I completely forgot. You need three slabs. We talk a tiny bit about how iron golem spawning works. Long story short, we need spawnable blocks for the iron golem to spawn on. This platform that we're building right now needs to be built out of spawnable blocks. For the most part in Minecraft, almost anything is a spawnable block, but don't use things that'll burn. Now after that, to make sure these villagers are fully contained and stay safe forever, we're gonna have one open block right here. We're gonna cover that up with a half slab on the lower half. If you built the walls of your villager containing cells out of spawnable blocks, you might need to double up and put more slabs here too. Great news for us though, glass is definitely not a spawnable block, which means a little bit of glass hanging off the side of the farm. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Next up, using a little bit of temporary blocks and then eventually some walls, specifically 19, we're gonna put some sides on the side of this thing. Now this farm, the, the version of my iron farm that we're building today, is my Minecraft 1.21. When I designed the farm, did a little bit of testing and everything, everything seemed to be flawless. But then in the comments of the tutorial, I saw some people saying that iron golems were getting stuck on some of the walls. To get around that, we're gonna use less walls than ever, and instead, more non burnable fence gates, or signs, than ever before. non burnable fence gates or signs than ever before. non burnable fence gate is very important. If you put jungle fence gate in this thing, it, you might come back later and it would be gone. You can use the nether fence gates right here, or alternatively, use five signs. If you use signs, just stack them on a wall and then on each other. And so, to just about almost finish everything up on top of this farm, with our platform built and staircases on the front, fence gates right there, or signs, we're gonna dump water right there and it's gonna flow. Almost all the way. We need one more bucket. To finish up the entire top portion of the farm, we need one more water source. We're gonna drop another one in this back corner. In total up here, we're gonna have two water sources. And that's just about it. Now there's one thing left. And that's called the air fryer. Now great news, at this point in our- oh, It just scared me way too much. Unreasonably so, I have feather falling. But great news, at this point in the build today, the world's most beautiful staircase with grass slowly creeping. We can actually pull it out. Back down below this farm, we left this pillar there for a good reason. And this pillar is gonna help us center up this next part of the build. To basically finish up the farm today, we need a way to dispose of all of the iron golems that are unfortunately gonna fall from this thing. A couple blocks off of the ground, we're gonna start with a glass block. We can go ahead and like move it later. From that glass block, we're actually only gonna go two blocks out in either direction. As you can see, I'm great at placing blocks. So here's how I'm kind of lining things up here. This block right there, it lines up with not only the middle of the farm perfectly, but also the front of it, yeah, other than the things hanging off of the front. We've got five blocks along right there with even more non-burnable blocks. Then we're going to go ahead and do a turn and do three blocks sticking out. After that, we're going to swing over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Our iron golem air fryer, the toaster for now, is going to need to be like three blocks tall. Now with an iron farm, when I was talking about this whole like iron golem spawning radius, well this is where iron golems will spawn, but if an iron golem is inside of this radius, then another one won't spawn. That's all gonna mean, to ensure maximum efficiency with this farm, instead of taking the iron golems out up top, we're gonna drop them all the way down to the ground, or almost to it, and take them out down here. That way, while one iron golem is burning up, theoretically, a second one could spawn. We're gonna build the floor of signs. We're gonna place a sign on the back wall and place more signs on top of it. There's gonna be 15 signs total. Kind of a lot and kind of a lot and, and then it's all sad. It's all sad. This is not good. And while I fight through the sadness, the pain of needing 15 hoppers for this next step is so expensive, I'd like to address today's comment of the day. Today's comment of the day is not a single comment, but instead it's like the entire comment section of the Villager Breeder episode. In the episode, I asked you guys if you want to see more like building focused episodes, and the strong answer was yes. I think I'm going to do it. There are a couple different builds that I like to get into the world that are also at the same time like kind of like useful farms or just pieces of the world. After seeing so many great comments and like actually really really inspiring ideas, I just want to say thank you to everybody for all the feedback on that episode. That was amazing. Genuinely, reading the comments to this day 
is still probably like my favorite part about these episodes. I set it out here and now a personal goal to earn all the hoppers back one day and in one day soon too. 15 hoppers. We need to do a floor of hoppers. One block spaced out below the signs here. Uh, great news. After placing the hoppers in, the farm is just about done. We need to get it up and running, get lava in it, but but that was a lot of iron. Too much iron. Anyways, lava. Using the lava farm, handy little machine built right over there. We're going to grab lava and tower up. We need to get behind this farm and then over the farm. Dead center, like right there on that sign, we dump the lava bucket. If we place it right, it should pour out and cover the entire floor. Now after that, there's only one thing we could do. I said, now after that, there's only one thing that we could do. Slowly, working our way back up towards the top of the farm. First things first, all of those, we're gonna get rid of them. They accidentally burn, oh well. Then these blocks right here, I never needed those. We'll get rid of those too. Now carefully, we're gonna move up closer to the top of the farm and start pulling out the dirt blocks and only these ones. As I start to pull them out, the villagers are gonna start freaking out. Now because this farm has had a little bit of time, the villagers might have been able to sleep, which means iron golems can begin spawning at any second here. As soon as I remove this one though, that's gonna be the third one in motion as soon as it decides to move a little bit. And it's gonna be time. Now for our farm here that we built today to continuously keep on working and running forever, we're gonna need three villagers to continuously panic and be able to sleep. If the villagers aren't able to sleep, the iron golem farm, the machine, is gonna stop running. If the farm doesn't start running right away, all you're gonna need to do is wait for the next nighttime. The villagers will jump into the bed and I can almost guarantee it. As soon as nighttime rolls around, the very first iron golem should spawn. For some reason, villagers have not only like a, you need three of them to be panicking for iron golems, but yeah, they need to continuously be able to sleep every couple nights as well. Now great news, because villagers jump into the bed sooner than the player can, it doesn't matter, like you don't need to wait up at nighttime every once in a while or whatever. Eventually they jump into bed and the madness begins. Now to clean up today's build is kind of part of the bonus build if you will. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of mud down here. I think mud looks really really nice with hoppers. It kind of like almost looks like a continuation of the hopper. My long term plan for this area of the world is very very different than how we're gonna leave it today. For now we'll solid it up with a little bit of mud but I can see it. One day very soon I'll be rolling in the iron. And when I am... <laughs> you don't even know who I am. When I'm rolling in the iron a little bit more, I think I'll come back in and maybe solid that up with some iron blocks instead. That would be the ultimate flex for sure. Also, I'm thinking big retaining wall too. That could look pretty cool. I'm just not too sure yet. I'm not too sure how I'll do it. I want to plan out the base over here a little bit more before I just start slapping a bunch of blocks in and call it good. But I was thinking maybe what I could do is have a path wrap around the lava building that'll kind of create like a safe non-burning barrier. Then it could cut straight out this way, like across by the lava farm, and who knows, maybe even over to a build that we end up building, like right here, in the very near future. Thank you all so much for watching today's guide episode. I hope you enjoyed. We're going to see a whole lot more of this iron farm in the future, so don't worry. A little side note here, if I still sound different in today's episode, it's because I'm still sick, and I'm trying to get over it, so, <laughs> yeah. I want to send a huge shout out to my patrons, Archangel, Ground Crazy May, Medical Boom 6, Whoopi Louvers, Noodle Pork Bill, W, Tanner B, Austin B, and Andrew H. You're the best. Remember, channel members get world downloads and patrons get early access to these episodes, so check that out if any of that's interesting to you. We go ahead and give those villagers just a tiny, tiny bit of time, and oh baby, beautiful iron farm. Thank you so much for watching.